Sea Dragon! That's not the rocket we're talking about today. Instead, we're going to be talking about its descendants. Last time we talked about Bob Truex, we talked about his Project Private Enterprise rocket. And I've got to admit, I made a mistake. I said that this red guy was just an extension of Project Private Enterprise as a part of CLAR and left it at that. I was wrong. It was the beginning part of CLAR. Sea Launch and Recovery, CLAR, was a Navy program towards developing a low-cost, fully reusable launch vehicle launched and recovered at sea. This is where Bob Truax comes in. Bob's work for Aerojet way back in the 1960s involved sea launching small pressure-fed Aerobee rockets and recovering them to be used again. That program was a test bed for the much larger Sea Dragon fully reusable super heavy lift launch vehicle. Project Private Enterprise was just a test bed for the future Excalibur launch vehicle. Okay, the first Excalibur is not related to CLR, but came before it during the Project Private Enterprise days as an intermediary between Project Private Enterprise and Sea Dragon. A good decision, if you ask me. Project Private Enterprise would simulate launch and recovery conditions of a pressure fed LOX kerosene first stage. This version, appearing in one article, I can't remember where I found it, was a subscale version of Sea Dragon capable of carrying either 60 or 45 metric tons to LEO at the low price of less than $100 per pound. Like Sea Dragon, this one will be made of steel and be a fully reusable two stage launch vehicle. Stage 1 would use LOX kerosene at 300 psi. Stage 2 would run LOX hydrogen at the low 75 psi. Oh, that does remind me. Everyone gets the second stage of Sea Dragon wrong. This is the nozzle. It expands. How else are you going to get a useful performance out of the second stage engine? With CLAR, Truax Engineering got up to 39 decommissioned corporal missiles, uh, those are pressure fed by the way, to conduct more sea launch tests, including the underwater ignition tests that the PPE rocket did. I, I, I think. There's not much detail on this. Along with corporal missiles, Truax got several surplus Thor missiles, their S3D motors and LR-101 motors, plus a bunch of surplus TR-201 motors from the Delta launch vehicle. Uh, for reference, TR-201s are pretty much the lunar module descent engines, so take a good look at these. Also, if you ever wanted to see a pintle injector, here you go! Truax proposed a brand new family of launch vehicles in the wake of CLAR. Excalibur XS through XL. XL being Sea Dragon, which we're not going to be talking about. Excalibur Extra Small would be a suborbital subscale technology demonstrator using a modified pressure fed variant of the S3D motor and use LR 101s for steering. Think of a large scale variant of the PPE rocket. If you're wondering why I'm not giving much detail, that's because there's not much to work with. This is a screenshot of the Truex Engineering website from 1997 to 2001. Excalibur XS then becomes Excalibur S. Encyclopedia Astronautica calls it Seahorse, except Seahorse was the name for the Sea Launch Corporal in the 1960s. This was a tough one, okay? The new Excalibur family would be a modernization of the old Sea Dragon design, notably changing the airframe material from steel to composite tanks. Thanks, Dan. Also, from what it looks like, the elimination of the ballast system for launch, but I can't find anything to suggest this. S's first stage would be powered by the same pressure-fed modified S3D and carry 35 metric tons of propellant, while weighing 40 wet. I don't know the performance numbers because the S3D ran at nearly 600 psi while pressure feds cap out at about 300. Stage two also runs on LOX kerosene. Encyclopedia Astronautica was wrong on this one, since the tankage here clearly is LOX kerosene, not LOX LH2. This would carry 13 metric tons of propellant and weigh about 15 wet. The payload is either 1 or 2 metric tons, depending on who you ask. Both stages are reusable. You can tell by the shape of the tanks. What happens to the payload fairing and inner stage? I don't know. They could probably be expended. Then comes the classic Truax design, Excalibur M. This uses an entirely new combustion chamber design, shown here. The lattice injector is a change from the classic pintle injector or the shower head of the S3D. I can't find much on this, sorry. Truax also built a subscale demonstrator motor using 300 series steel, including a pepper box gimbling system for improved steering. Oh, and the second stage engine was inflatable. How is this supposed to work? I don't know. Bob built a subscale demonstrator of it, though. 
Excalibur M was designed to carry 5,000 kilograms to Leo. The payload here is a space based laser, likely a holdover from the Strategic Defense Initiative, also known as Star Wars program. If the payload mass to gross liftoff weight ratio is similar to Sea Dragon, then this would weigh about 250 metric tons at liftoff. Stage 1 would be a locked kerosene pressure fed with 300 psi engine that has an area ratio of 5. Thrust would be up to 1.1 million pounds. Propellant mass would be somewhere around 179 metric tons. The dry weight is, well, unknown. Stage 2 would be LOX LH2 operating at 75 psi and an area ratio of about 20. Total propellant mass is around 83,154.2 kilograms and the dry mass is, again, unknown. However, unlike a conventional pressure fed, Excalibur uses a novel means to maintain tank pressure. The big problem with Big Dumb Booster is pressurization. Tank pressure is a multiple of the chamber pressure, and propellant tanks need a means of being pressurized themselves, meaning you end up with a vehicle that gets really heavy really fast. Trax's way of fixing this was called VAPAC, or Autogenerous Pressurization, which I probably can't pronounce right. This here is the first stage, kerosene, locks, and a helium tank. What you do is run the helium around the combustion chamber in a heat exchanger. The chamber is cooled and the helium is heated, and toss it into the propellant tanks. As we should all know, hot gases expand, and in a constrained volume, this will increase pressure. I think this is also done separately on the LOX tank, but the imagery is too small. If we look at Excalibur XS, which I think uses methane for RP1 pressurization like Sea Dragon, you can see several heat exchangers for building and maintaining pressure. This helps lower stage mass considerably. In fact, several launch vehicles use some variant of this, like Starship and the Space Shuttle. Then comes Excalibur L, large, capable of carrying up to 60 metric tons to LEO. The gross liftoff weight would be something around 1,200 tons, assuming Sea Dragon numbers. There aren't any internal diagrams for this one, but we can assume that it's a scaled up version of the M model. I don't have a solid timeline of what Truax was doing and when. The Spears website shows three instances of funding from 1993 to 1999, which correlates with the age of the Truax engineering website, being made in 1997 and vanishing in about 2001. One was for working on metallized propellants. Uh, that's interesting. Obviously, Excalibur never went beyond 400 by 200 pixel concept art, and the dream has faded, even to the point where most people don't even know what this rocket looks like. And before continuing, here are some other images I got off the web archive for the Truex Engineering website, simply because I'm worried that no one will ever see them again. Would Excalibur have worked? Hard to say. I think this discussion is better suited for Sea Dragon, simply because there's actual technical information published on it. I'll say this. A fully reusable sea-launched pressure-fed launch vehicle has never been done before. Bob's work was mostly done on a small pressure-fed sounding rocket, with extensive testing on another small pressure-fed rocket. Nothing full-scale. The TRL of this kind of system is low, so saying yes is as equally bad as saying no. As for the cost of a launch, I suspect a real version would be a bit more expensive than what Bob was hoping for. He claimed a reuse stage would be 7-10% as expensive as a new one, which is... possible? But there's a lot more to launch architectures than just that. Though I do believe that pressure feds are much more amenable to reusability than other systems. And there it is! Excalibur! Fully reusable, sea launched, big, and dumb. Only one more Bob Truax rocket to go, and that one is much, much more well documented than Excalibur. It's an interesting design with clever solutions to common problems with BDB. It's a shame that there's so little of it available beyond the archived website from 20 years ago. Excalibur! That's a rocket you know!